Happy Hour. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Call security! We met young Ryan Hoppy. Ryan. Okay, can your name? Ryan Hoppy. Okay, Ryan Hoppy, where do you live? Probably the nice. Ah, so you're from the rich north suburbs. What's going on, Ryan Hoppy? This is Tony Rowe. Your buddy, Ryan Hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows who Ryan Hoppy is. You never have to worry about offending Ryan Hoppy. Isn't he like seven foot tall? He's yeah. seven foot tall. He's And he's only, a, he's a kid. He's right. a kid. He's, uh, he's got good mentors. And he's motivated. Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Oh yeah, it's Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Let's get right into it. If you've heard this show before, then you know what it's about. If you've never heard it, I don't feel like explaining it. You'll just make your own opinion after listening. But this is Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. And I am sick and tired of the royal family. Oh, my goodness. I know by me talking about it, I am contributing to their fame. I'm making them even more famous. I'm a part of the problem. But at the same time, I speak my mind on here about the royal family because everybody covers them and covers up everything they say and covers them with a bias. Everybody in the media covers up Prince Andrew. These are the same people overseas in the UK that would rip into Trump. Oh, but when you have your own weirdo, you ain't going to talk about it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, This is a good headline. This is from the Daily Mail. Tons of perverts and a prince. Nigel Cawthorn takes a forensic look at the abuse suffered by Virginia Roberts, the ex-sex slave of uh, Prince Andrew, who he just paid $12 million. Yeah, if you're innocent, you're not really giving up $12 million. Oh, but thank God that they're the royal family. They've contributed so much to the world. By always having to take pictures. That was cool how that ended. By always having to take pictures of how they're doing something. Oh, look at us. We're helping out the poor. Please make sure you get photos at all times, okay? Please. I mean, over and over again, you literally, like, look at any picture of them in, like, another country, and it's like, we must have everybody know that we were here. Because if we don't let people know, then it doesn't matter. It's a despicable family. There's times I despise the Kardashians and I cover them on here, but my God, I actually despise the royal family. Like, with all my heart. As Jelaine Maxwell barked, enough! The the chauffeur slammed on the brakes and looked around to see what had caught her attention. It was a young blonde girl, perhaps 14, he thought. In fact, Virginia Roberts was 15, but she looked younger in her white uniform. She had come out from the spa of Donald Trump's exclusive Mar-a-Lago club in Florida, where she was making nine bucks an hour as a locker room attendant. Business had been slow that Tuesday in 1998, so she had gone outside to read a book on anatomy. Oh, that's cool. Having watched the club masseuses at work, she had her, 
she had set her heart on becoming a massage therapist as well. So she's hanging out there. She's making nine bucks an hour, this victim. And she's like, I, I, I want to just put in my hours. Sitting in the warm sunshine, she looked up to see a good-looking woman in her late 30s walking towards her. To her surprise, the woman introduced herself. It was her first encounter with Jelaine Maxwell. That's creepy, man. She had excellent manners, a prim and proper English accent, and seemed very friendly. Yeah, Jelaine Maxwell has that look in your eyes where you're like, watch out, man. Then came the flattery from Jelaine Maxwell. So she's uh, like first being nice to any of the victims and then begins flattering them, being nice, saying nice things. Essentially grooming. She said that the victim had a cheery personality and that she was very pretty and that we want to have you work with this super rich guy. He flies around everywhere. You can come in for an interview on Monday. It sounds like the people that sold Vector Knives. I don't know if you remember Vector Knives in 2012. I was a freshman in community college for the one year I went and everybody was selling Vector Knives and that was kind of the mindset of it. And then it just goes on in this article to talk about the things that Prince Andrew did. And it's just like, it's utterly insane because, um, I don't know. It just feels like we're getting (laughs) royally screwed. Like, I wonder who else hung out with Prince Andrew. I wonder who else hung out with Jeffrey and Jelaine, Jislaine. I wonder who hung out with them that we're not aware of. You know what I mean? I always find it weird that those get settled out of court. Like, yeah, we get forced down our throat. The Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case for about 10 years this year. God, that will always be 2022. Whenever you see a video of that, you'll go 2022. It's just going to be ingrained in your brain. It's like Pokemon Go of 2016. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard 2022. They had all that footage, but you can't show any of the footage of Prince Andrew in court. You can't show any of the footage of Jelaine Maxwell. And the best we get, not even pictures of Jelaine Maxwell or Prince Prince Andrew, is we get drawings like it's the 1800s. Yeah, because they're caught in the 1800s. They're creeps. (laughs) And then, like, I get you can be into it or whatever, but I hate to, like, it's a lot of times boomer moms... My mom kind of did it, but then when she found out more about it, she's not as into it. So I'll defend her there. But there was all the moms that got up at four in the morning to watch uh, Kate Middleton and Prince William get married like 11 years ago. I can't believe it was 11 years ago. And literally, I remember I was just like, everybody was tired in class that day because they got married at like four in the morning because they were like eight hours ahead of us. And all those people that were watching it, if you were to tell them, yeah, Prince Andrew's a pedophile or whatever... They have this false image of the royal family. It's almost like religion. Like everybody that believes in an afterlife has an image of the afterlife, but none of them are the same thing because everybody's got their own idea of what that fake thing is. It's the same thing with the royal family. It goes like everyone goes, oh, it's a wonderful family because they take really good pictures in public. But then when you bring somebody the facts, it's like a Joe Biden supporter. When you tell them Joe Biden's a weirdo, did some bizarre things to his kids. Oh, no, he didn't do anything. But then when it's time to rip into somebody on the Republican side or the royal family, they go, no, 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 let's just do it. No. Actually, they don't do it for the royal family. That's what I'm saying. Only the Republicans get the hate. Democrats, royal family. Oh, they have creeps. Whatever. (laughs) I don't want to die, man. I am so afraid of it. But I am so glad I'm going to die. Because I just love that none of us get out alive, man. It is so amazing because despicable imbeciles like Prince Andrew, no, he's not going to hell. Shut up! Besides, anybody who's religious that watches the royal family probably thinks he's innocent. So Shut up! That's not even a concept that's worth discussing. What I'm saying is this. I am saying you can believe what you want. You can say what you want. But I love that Prince Andrew is going to die. It's just amazing because it's just like, I can't imagine somebody living forever and somebody else not. Could you imagine if it was like a 50-50, if you lived forever or if the next person didn't live forever? So there were people that were like, bye, you're going to die. Eight, five, six. I wonder how my brain's doing. 49 Hoppy. 
This is from the Daily Mail. Prince William is grieving and really, really angry over the collapse of his relationship with Harry. With friends saying there is little chance of them repairing their rift. Oh, I hate when siblings argue. I don't have any siblings. I don't really think I would have got along with siblings. But if he's really angry and grieving, wouldn't you try to work over it? Oh, wait, that's right. You're the royal family. You think you're better than everybody. And you are despicable. I despise you. They say the current relationship is at a rock bottom with little chance of improvement. Well, Harry did have moments at the rock bottom when he was on drugs in Vegas. So he's used to the rock bottom. Prince William, he's not. Actually, he's been in rock bottom since the day he met Kate Middleton. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment <laughs> was brought to you by dbinfusions.com. When I tell you that they have the best CBD, the best Delta 8 around, I'm a man of my words. Go to dbinfusions.com and tell them I sent you and that you heard about it on Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Someone hit me up with a flame. I'm having a nick fit. Uh, light him up. Meet what? Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my whiskey. I'm going to get tore up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my boss. I don't think Meat Wad should be hanging around with these moon people. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. I got some breaking news for you. Breakups are not fun. This is from the Daily Mail. Rachel Bilson reveals her split from comedian Bill Hader was harder than childbirth as she makes rare comments about her private life. She does do a good job of being low-key because I've never heard of Rachel Bilson. You ever met somebody that goes, oh my God, I love the body of work of Rachel Bilson. I gotta look up who Rachel Bilson is because she's saying, oh, I've always been private. Yeah, because we're not really going, hey, everybody, where the hell is Rachel Bilson? All right, let me see here. Oh, wow, you were in the OC. Cool. Yeah, we're not really going, hey, she was in Heart of Dixie on the CW. You were also in Jumper in 2008. Oh, yeah, Rachel Bilson, we begged to find out what's going on with you. She confirmed she had a romance with Bill Hader, the 40-year-old actress. Damn, she looks good for 40. Hell to the yeah. The 40-year-old actress took sparked speculation of a romance with the SNL alum when they attended the Golden Globes back in 2020. What, was that through Zoom? Or was that, that was probably right before the pandemic. Bill and I dated two years ago. I went with him to the effing Golden Globes with him, she said on the Broad Ideas podcast. Rachel, who is known to audiences for her role as Summer Roberts on the teen series The O.C., was chatting to Aubrey Plaza when she made the revelation and the podcast host seemed to be shocked at the revelation. Aubrey said, are you serious? I don't know us. I don't know anything. Yeah. I love how we're supposed to remember her role as Summer Roberts. Like, oh, yeah, you're, you're the disgruntled 17-year-old in the 2000s with a flip phone on a TV show on Fox. Oh, you're, you're acting? And that could go with any gender, too. Like, and then it's like the dudes who, like, work out but are unsure about themselves and then write blogs online because it's in 2004. Yeah. While she did not s- specify anything about Bill besides what she said, In last week's episode of her podcast, she admitted that she had been through a hard breakup during the COVID lockdown in 2020. Yeah, that has to suck getting dumped during COVID because then you're alone. 
Can you imagine getting dumped during COVID and then getting COVID and then you don't even have anybody to like take care of you? She told her uh, guest, Mandy Moore. Wow, so, like, we're all getting old. So all the, like, old 2000s people are hanging out with other people. You know what I mean? You don't see Mandy Moore on, like, TikTok. She told Mandy Moore, I could not leave my house. You know what I mean? I have nothing else to do but sit in it and deal with it and feel it. That was probably the hardest thing I've ever done, harder than childbirth. It hurt like a mother effer. When you use the MF word, that means it really hurt. If you were to say it hurts like an effer, okay, I get it. But when you say mother effer, you are really specifying that things were hard. You are letting us know that it was not the best time. Like a mother effer. That is raunchy, man. That is a naughty girl. I mean, if that's in your vocabulary, ooh, you don't want to make her mad. You mother effer. I mean... It's such a crude word, too, when you really, like, people say it, but you don't really think about what they're saying, and when you when you hear them go, yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, I see this on TMZ. <laughs> Amber heard shopping at TJ Maxx with her sibling, and she's just walking around like, how can I get noticed? Because honestly, her appearance in court and her appearance looking like crap in uh this is, hey, TJ Maxx? Yeah, and TJ Maxx, she looks the same as she did in court. Ooh, this is a good line by TMZ. Really poking the bear. Amber Heard is facing a harsh and expensive reality after the Johnny Depp trial. Namely, that she could be on the hook for millions, but it's no surprise she was out bargain hunting. <laughs> hey, when I'm a millionaire, I want to go to TJ Maxx. She's been with her sibling who's been tagging along lately. TMZ was told Amber and Whitney were perusing wrecks for clothes, and at one point they were heard discussing white linen pants. It seems like they had a whole basket full of purchases. Purchases. I just slurred through that. 856 49 Hoppy. I love how TMZ is acting like this is a big deal. Like, some of the smartest millionaires, I mean, yeah, Amber's already broke, but some of the smartest millionaires just buy everything at Dollar Tree. Like, when I'm a millionaire, I'm just going to buy, like, 12 tubes of, like, um, toothpaste at Dollar Tree. Also, the lube at Dollar Tree. To die for... Uh, 856-49-HOP. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. I don't know, man. I'm also looking at this uh, Charlie Sheen thing with his daughter, but I don't even think he realized that she wasn't going to be naked. Oh, this is a good one. We'll get to the Charlie Sheen thing in a second. Uh, Roe v. Wade protested Amy Coney Barrett's home, blood and doll symbols of what's to come. That's good. I, I, um, I never really get people that protest and burn things down for any anything. Uh, a shooting of a... Uh, from a police officer, a police officer shooting, or if it's riots about not getting our check back a year and a half ago, or protests about Roe versus Wade, I never get it because you're just making them more mad about the situation. If you were to come at them with peace and logic and say, hey, can we talk or anything, they're going to go, okay. Maybe it is okay to kill babies. <laughs> so that's their logic because it's fetus. You know what I'm saying? But when you're like demolishing their house, they're always going to associate that. Dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. As decision over the fate of Roe versus Wade looms, pro-choice activists descended on the home of conservative justice Amy Coney Barrett dressed in blood-soaked clothing and holding dolls. The group, members of Rise Up for Abortion Rights, traveled to the house in Falls Church, Virginia. It really is weird looking. Like I'm all for abortion because you can do what you want with your body. I'd prefer not to have an abortion, but I get it. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your body. But it's really weird seeing them like wearing these white clothes and there's like blood in the lower area and then they're holding like a baby doll. It's just kind of unsettling. I'm in full support of it in a sad way. Like I'm totally down for whatever, 
But, man, it's just when you really think about it, it I don't know, maybe that's because I grew up semi-Roman Catholic. So, I, I don't know, I feel semi-sad about it. But there's some kids, man, like, how do I word this? Let me make sure I word this properly. The world is so bad out there that, like, if the afterlife is there, why not just take them right to the afterlife? Why do they have to experience this? Bam Margera is in the news. Bam Margera's recent split from wife caused him to bounce from rehab. Bam Margera has another crisis on his plate besides recently fleeing rehab, although they're related. We've learned a split from his wife played a huge part in his decision. He and his wife, Nikki Boyd, broke up a couple of weeks ago. Since then, he hasn't been able to get a hold of her or see his son, Phoenix Wolf. We're told she has not responded to any of his texts or calls, and she has been absent from his recovery. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll give you my opinion in a second. But it says here, due to the separation, he was at the sober living home when he made his unauthorized exit from rehab. We're told he held it together for a while, but after not hearing from Nikki or his son for two weeks, he had poor judgment and left the treatment facility. That's another thing. Like, I know he's insane and on drugs, but like breaking out of a, essentially a loony bin. Oh, yeah, that's going to make the mother of your kid want to be around you. Because we don't know what's going on, but I would really hope that she's just... Because I know he's probably unbearable. He comes off like an asshat on Jackass. He comes off like an asshat in person. He's always pissing everybody off. So I'm sure it's emotionally draining being in a relationship with him and having him as a father. Holy daddy issues. <laughs> having Bam Margera as your father, oh my God. Whatever shrink you see in 20 years is going to make so much money off of you. But I would like to think that she's not like, like, let's say things are bad between her and Bam, but they're not the worst. But then she just doesn't want to deal with it. So it's making him worse. Because, like, I would like to think that he's an okay person. I've also never met him and I don't know much about him. I wonder what it's like having a kid with him, knowing that this guy that everybody deems as crazy is like your child's father. Because when she was banging him when he wasn't crazy or less crazy, he was sexy. He was Bam Margera from Jackass. But now he's Bam Margera, an actual drunken, coke-headed jackass. 856-49-HOPPY. 856-494-6773. So I guess there's this woman named Amy Schneider who won a bunch of times in a row on Jeopardy. And, okay, she was the first openly transgender Jeopardy champ. All right, that makes perfect sense. I wish it happened while Alex Trebek was here because, uh, man, this new Jeopardy host, it just would have been really good TV with, like, the first, you have, like, a big monumental moment, the first transgender winner, and then you have Alex, or you have... um, you have Alex Trebek, almost said Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin would not say nice things. That is not a nice man. Mike Tyson says he's flying commercial again. No worries about future altercations yet because he'll kick your ass. Oh, that dummy really pissed him off. Yeah, let me poke the bear. Let me poke literally someone that can beat up a bear. A good idea. Mike. How are you, brother? It's good to see you, man. It's been a while. Getting some worthers on. <laughs> hey, bro, you're about to hop on a flight. Yeah. Do you now worry about who's going to be sat behind you? No way. Tyson 2.0, you know about that, right? You're Tyson 2.0 now? Tyson 2.0, you know about Tyson 2.0. Yeah. That's what I'm about now, man. I love that, it's all bro. About Tyson 2.0. Hey, what the fuck is a Tyson 2.0? You said pissed off and high. I would have thought high would be would mellow you out, anyone out. I, you know what I mean? Hey, you don't even, you have to take too much, man. The Tyson 2.0 is the way to go, man. Don't forget to get that. Are you gonna get Tyson? What a frightening man. Tyson 2.0. Me? Yes. I gotta rewind this. I love hearing about Tyson 2.0. I don't know what that means, but it sounds deadly. High would be would mellow you out, anyone out. I, you know what I mean? 
Hey, you don't even, you have to take too much, man. The Tyson 2.0 is the way to go, man. Don't forget to get that. Are you going to get Tyson 2.0? Me? Yes. Am I going to get it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Say it. Oh, what? Tyson 2.0. One more time. Tyson 2.0. I love it, man. Any advice for celebrities how to deal with overzealous fans? Let me love, them. love them. Hug them. Hey, love them. That was him legally talking. He wanted to beat that guy's ass. That guy, oh. That millennial that he beat up a few months ago looked like such a pussy. Like, he's one of those dudes that, like, finds out where all the celebrities are and then, like, sells their autographs at, like, conventions. There's, like, those, like, nerdy white dudes that do that. And you're like, oh, you're the worst, bro. You're not somebody I want to hang out with. 856-49-HOPPY. Oh, this is a, this is a, a real winner here. Our HOC star son, Josh Waring, caught for fentanyl, meth. Cops say he was dealing. Let me see which. The Real Housewives of Orange County. Lori Peterson from the show. Her son is allegedly dealing drugs. Especially fentanyl. Like, it's never cool to deal weed. Man, when you go down the road of, like, fentanyl and, like, the drugs that can kill people, uh, get away from me and go away. According to new legal documents, Josh Waring is facing criminal charges for an arrest back in January, including felony possession and a sale of fentanyl, plus a misdemeanor charge of meth and amphetamine possession. And he just looks like a bad dude. Like he's like one of those spoiled brats. Like there's like I feel like when you grow up semi rich and you're amongst other rich people, you want to like create your own problems. Like he had no reason to be a drug dealer. Orange County Sheriff's Department sources tell TMZ a deputy saw Josh in the passenger seat of a car, recognizing him from a prior drug arrest. Like that's how much of a loser you are that you're remembered. The deputy was aware Josh was on parole for an assault, which meant the cop could conduct a random search which he did and found drugs right on josh's lap a real winner hell yeah josh you went far in life bud <laughs> honestly i'd rather be known as a drug dealer than someone on the real housewives of orange county so maybe he is winning in life happy hour happy hour the hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by Dwayne the Mattress Guy. A mattress by Hillsboro. A13452555. That's A13452555. When I tell you that Mattress by Appointment Hillsboro is the best around, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. A one three four five two five 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 five. Happy hour. Happy hour. It's like a uh, nine thousand dollar prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine one thousand dollar ones? Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like twenty minutes, I'm gonna be asleep, so get them up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail. Yo, what's up? Baby, .com. Also, go to every single major platform that has a podcast. Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Amazon Music, Mixcloud, and search up Happy Radio, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Back to the news. Whoa, happy Hot Topic. Chloe 
Kardashian responds to rumors she's dating again. <gasps> Buzz started swirling after the celebrity gossip Instagram account Dumois received a submission from a fan wondering, quote, when will Coco enter her BDE era? Oh, uh, when she s- s- quits going back to somebody who cheats on her all the time. I turned up the volume, so uh, I realized the last few episodes, the news clips have been quieter, so it's going to be a little louder now. As fans know, Chloe's sister oh, yeah. Kim recently revealed that she was DTF with Pete Davidson because of his BDE. Yeah, and all these like Gen Xers are like, what's BDE? I don't like that. It's like, well, then if if you're asking what BDE is and you're getting offended by BDE, trust me, you don't have BDE. Now, Dumois posted another photo combining the earlier submission with a response from a source claiming, quote, I heard she was dating another NBA player after being. Hasn't she dated like half the league? Asked to reveal the identity of the player, the source wrote back, quote, my boss couldn't remember his name. Sorry. Oh, uh, that's so accidental. The report made its way to the Kardashian social Instagram fan page where Chloe hopped in the comment section and put an end to the speculation by By saying what? Saying, quote, definitely not true. I love you. Thank you for the nice wishes, but I'm not seeing a soul. I'm happy focusing on my daughter and myself for a while. Yeah, things are cobwebs right now. 856-49-HOPPY. Oh, here's Selena Gomez. Always living in the past. If it's about Bieber and all her decisions. Oh, yeah. We feel so sorry for you. No! Happy Hot Topic! Selena Gomez says she regrets one of her past album covers and reveals the reason why. Because now you're prude. The Hollywood Reporter holds a candid discussion during a roundtable focusing on comedic actresses in television. No, now you're just um, embarrassed by it because you're around a bunch of people that are wearing long sleeve clothes, so they would never show any skin. So now you're like, I want to fit in with the feminists. Including Tracy Ellis Ross, Bridget Everett, Who? Amy Schumer. Yuck. Selena Gomez, um, Quinta Brunson, mm. and Molly Shannon. Oh, wow. When uh, it- it's quite the crew. It's quite the, the party. <laughs> Definitely not pretentious. Amy Schumer points out how Selena has always rejected being sexualized, even from the beginning of her career. The Look At Me Now singer shares a candid story about a time where she felt ashamed. Well, the poor thing began at Disney, and they essentially sexualize you when you're born. Yuck. I actually did an album cover mm-hmm. and um, I was really ashamed after I did it. I had to work through those feelings because I realized it was attached to something deeper that was going on. Wow. Uh, that you were in your early 20s and when you're in your early 20s, we're all a bunch of sluts. Is that what it is? And it was a choice that I wasn't necessarily happy that I made, but I, but I think that... Okay, were you forced into it or did you make it willy-nilly? Because we all make choices that we kind of, I, I don't want to say disagree with, but you look back in your early 20s, and you look at some of the things you did working in Cleveland Radio, they, you're just kind of like, oh, why did I do that? So if it's her just regretting it, don't regret it. But if someone forced you into it, let's find them and cancel them. I've done my best, at least. I've I tried to be myself and myself isn't i'm not an overly sexual person sometimes or exciting or fun to listen to eight five six four nine hobby but i always talk about bieber because he gives me clout this next headline i love how vince mcmahon gets kicked out of like the wwe as it's essentially irrelevant unless you grew up watching it oh man They literally knew that Vince McMahon was a creep since day one. But, oh, 2022, when, let's see how old Vince McMahon is. Let's kick him out when he's 80. Be like Don Imus and dies two years later. Literally, he's on the trail to be Don Imus. He was around too long, 76. Don Imus died at 79. His birthday. Oh, dude, watch Vince McMahon die like 79. Because if he doesn't have what he's had his whole life, what the hell is he going to have? Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. World Wrestling Entertainment boss Vince McMahon stepping aside while his company investigates him for alleged misconduct. ABC Zachary Keish is here with the details. I've always found Vincent Vince McMahon fascinating because he's just such a bigger than life bizarro. Very weird guy. 
Zachary, good morning. He's been a part of that company for decades. Mm. Yes, Janae, good morning to you as well. Vince McMahon hey, bought the early version of what has become the WWE from his father. And over the years, he's been front and center as it's become a lucrative business. You don't say, white trash unite. <laughs> oh, I got to skip over this probably. Just, or no, I'll just play it. What the hell is the copyright going to do? Overnight, Vince McMahon was in the ring, but he's temporarily out as yeah. the CEO of the Worldwide Wrestling Entertainment Organization. Temporarily out, that means he'll pay it off next week and be back and he'll take classes to learn how to be a better man. Welcome to SmackDown! Oh yeah! The WWE, an iconic brand, is one of the most popular television sporting programs, attracting millions of weekly viewers. Sporting? I mean, I know... Sporting, entertainment, not sporting. What are you, a nerd? It's real, damn it. The man who helped build the business is stepping aside after becoming the subject of a company investigation. Mm -hmm. The Wall Street Journal reporting that McMahon allegedly paid $3 million to a former employee after the two reportedly had an affair. All powerful people have an affair. Next, give me something interesting. You telling me Vince McMahon cheated on his wife? Whoa, breaking news. According to the report, the woman, who was hired with a salary of $100,000 yeah. a year, saw her pay double after the relationship started. Uh, that's, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> the report describes an alleged pattern of behavior involving McMahon relationships with female staffers. Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Ending with separation agreements and payments that prevent them from speaking. All right, this is getting a little bad here. Nothing he can't escape. This is the most relevant thing to ever happen to wrestling. This is actually the most unique thing to ever be talked about when it comes to the WWE. McMahon has been a visible fixture for decades. Yeah. And while the board investigates, his daughter Stephanie has stepped in as interim CEO. Uh, that's got to be awkward. Your dad banged half the office. <laughs> Stephanie McMahon! A joint statement released by WWE and its board of directors says they take all allegations of misconduct very seriously and they have engaged independent legal counsel to assist them in the independent review. Mm. ABC News has not heard from WWE and McMahon on request for comment. Oh, I'm sure they're going to respond to Good Morning America right away. They're going to try to cover that up. If you are flying today, be sure to check with your airline before you head out to the airport. That's a good idea. Just see what's going on. More than 600 flights already have been canceled this morning. Yeah. That is on top of thousands of cancellations and delays on Friday and Saturday. Airlines still recovering from big storms this week as they also deal with an increased number of travelers. The world's also ending. That doesn't really help out the cause. And a shortage of airline workers. 856 49 Hoppy. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have taken a nosedive as interest rates rise and investors search for less risk. Just give me real money. Who cares about crypto? I don't care if the crypto can make me $10 million. Just give me the real money. Rebecca Jarvis back with that story. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, yeah. guys. And there's a lot of interest in this story, considering the number of amateur and first-time investors who got caught up at the hype and the A-list celebrities who helped drive it. Cryptocurrencies were supposed to be a hedge against the kind of economy we're experiencing right now. Yeah, but it's all money laundering. Let's be honest here. Now? They're crashing. <gasps> this morning, after years of hype, fortune favors the brave. And, and major commit. celebrity endorsements, cryptocurrencies crashing. The <laughs> <laughs> mania reaching a fever pitch earlier this year, with A listers including Matt adventure. Damon, Reese Witherspoon, and LeBron James yeah. promoting the digital currencies. Help. Yeah, but they probably gave them actual money to promote it, not the crypto points. I'm sure they gave them crypto points too, but I'm sure they were paid actual money. Thing build an army. I would respect it if the person was just paid in crypto points, but if you're being paid money to promote crypto, you're not genuine. I'm not listening to you. Helping build an army of true believers. Those celebs now facing criticism. After yeah, they don't care. Phil Mickelson doesn't care that he's got dirty money. Who cares? We're all going to die someday. If they want to be scumbags, I'll let them. We're all on borrowed time. 
amateur investors, some who poured their but we're not on borrowed time here because I'm bored. And when I'm bored, that means you're bored. That's the rule here. Get it? Got it. Good. You know what I'm saying? No! Happy Hot Topic! Denise Richards has nothing but support for her daughter's career path. Oh, my God. We're s- still talking about Charlie Sheen's daughter. She's taking pictures of her butt in lingerie. She's not having sex on camera. People just don't want... It's nothing. It's it's literally st- stock photos. And you know when you used to look up like hot chicks in the 90s and 2000s when you had slow internet? That's what it looks like. There's nothing sexual. You don't see any orifices. No, no, no. It's not really that good, to be honest. If people pay for it, they're thinking they have a chance to get with her. Because the content, not really worth it. The Real Housewives alum defended 18-year-old Sammy Sheen's decision to join OnlyFans, yeah. sharing in a lengthy Instagram statement on Friday that she, quote, can't be judgmental of Sammy's choices after I married your dad and wishes she had her confidence to ignore the negativity. Writing in part, I'm in awe of her ability to be able to shut out the noise because it can destroy you. So did your father. <laughs> he ruined me. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by FitSageFitness.net. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer and the best sage... And the best dude around, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I am a genuine person. FitSageFitness.net. And when you go there and you tell him I sent you, he's going to hook you up, my good friend, who's currently listening to these words on Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Well... It was good while it lasted, I guess. But, Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Tell me about I it. found an even older glory hole two towns over. <laughs> Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple, lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, the most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah, 856. 49 Hoppy. It's 856. 494 You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me. Ryan, happy radio at gmail.com. Oh, happy hot topic. Has Khloe Kardashian moved on from Tristan Thompson? Nope, a nod at all. Not so fast. No. The reality star set the record straight after a new report claimed she was dating another NBA player. Khloe chimed in on the gossip with an Instagram comment over the weekend, making it clear that she's single but not ready to mingle. Oh, she totally is. She probably made that post while mingling. Writing. Oh, crap. I forgot to put up my post for 5 p.m. Let's just say I'm not having sex. Definitely not true. I love you. Thank you for the nice wishes, but I am not seeing a soul. I- just because, um, how do I word this? The, the joke was going to be you could see somebody and they don't have a soul, but the joke kind of failed. It was not funny. <laughs> I am happy focusing on my daughter and myself for a while. Um. Chloe's latest remark comes days after the season finale of Hulu's The Kardashians. The show chronicled the fallout from Tristan's paternity scandal. Uh, which- that was a big deal, knocking up other women, even though he's done it a million times. Oh, he'll change the million and first time. Resulted in the 31-year-old confirming earlier this year that he'd fathered a child with fitness influencer Marilee Nichols. Which she just looks like a side check. Like she just has like demonic energy. I'm sure it's great in bed, but ruin your life. He and Chloe were together. Tristan apologized in an Instagram statement at the time. What about Marilee? Is she sorry for ruining a relationship? Yeah, I know he's not she's not the only thing that ruined it, but you're a part of the piece. You're a piece to the puzzle. 
that Chloe doesn't, quote, deserve the heartache and humiliation he's caused her. Oh, but you keep doing it. And she weighed in. Ah, you don't deserve it, but I'm going to keep doing it. What it was like watching the situation unfold on air months later, mm. admitting on Twitter in May that a storyline about her and Tristan's prior reconciliation didn't age well. Nope, not at all. Nothing you do ages well. You do, but you pretty much did a Photoshop job on your body. And earlier this month, she reflected on her close-knit support system in a candid tweet, mm. writing... Rewatching this part is uncomfortable, but I love and appreciate my family more than I can express. It's that damn team of us. We got these writers that make things spicy. Oh, because you think the you think the Kardashians are genuine. Praise the Lord, I have them for the rest of my life. Praise the Lord. No, I thought your go-to catchphrase was "Oh God." Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, yeah. Happy hour. We'll be right back. This following segment has been brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that they are the best printing company in the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need printed up, WestChasePrinting.com can do it. West Chase Printing in DJ Tone Tampa on Instagram. <laughs> All right, here's, here's the deal. Here's how this works. When you go there and you get the invoice, name drop me and mention that you heard about it on... Happy hour. For a good deal. Happy hour. Happy hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2, but I'm already 38.1. I've wasted half my life. <laughs> Half my life gone, and I'm only guaranteed 38 more years. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Sing it, baby. You mean it. Oh, 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 shout it out. Feel it, feel it, feel it. When you need it. Oh, yeah. Not so good. Oh, let's get down and party. <laughs> Best theme song for the worst show ever. It had to even itself out. Feel it, feel it, feel it. The Wendy Williams show is set apart from the other shows because... I'm going to ruin everyone's life. This was her in the beginning of the show. The Wendy Williams show is set apart from the other shows because um, I'm giving the Wendy. And I'm not a polished journalist. I'm just- no, you're not. There's nothing polished about you. <laughs> besides, uh, besides that line of cocaine in the corner that you sniffed. This old nosy woman from the suburbs of New Jersey, and I want Ugh. it all. We're making. At least since day one, she's known that she's been a piece of garbage. Making our way through the first week of the Wendy Williams show, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm entering a new chapter in my life. A very necessary chapter. Yeah, I have a lot of revenge in my heart. Let's ruin everyone's personal lives for 14 years, and then my life will be the one that explodes the most. What a bad person. And I feel poised ready and very supported and prepared and and ready to be not just a face in daytime tv my desire is to be america's sweetheart well you've had about seven different faces on your show so you really you were in line about that factor dog the bounty hunter's daughter lisa is married i gotta skip over this because of copyright Reality star tied the knot with longtime girlfriend Liana Evanson. Yeah, she got a girlfriend. Following more than six years of dating, the couple's Hawaii ceremony took place on June 3rd. That was a good time. Everyone's hanging up. 
Lisa shared these snapshots of their intimate ceremony to Instagram. Lisa wore a white dress with Liana matching in a white button-down top. And Hell yeah, a love is love. Both capped off their ensembles with flower crowns. As she describes the day of their union in the caption, they were surrounded by seven of their closest family members. Mm. And it seems Dwayne was unable to attend, seeing it. Yeah, I'm sure he's totally not homophobic. Shut up! He's the worst. As he wasn't in any of Lisa's pics. Yeah, I don't really see her talking to him. Video montage shows them saying, I do, while standing in the Pacific Ocean. He's the same type of small dick energy that I'd be offended that there was a quick kiss between two female characters and Buzz Lightyear. Shut up! I can't play it. It's just video, but there's probably music and copyright. Yeah. You're a homophobic piece of garbage if you're not over the idea of two of the same genders loving each other. If it makes you uncomfortable, if it makes you queasy, you're homophobic or whatever they refer to as. You're phobic to that. You're transphobic. You're whatever. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I love hearing everybody get offended by Lightyear. Everybody who is like, oh, my God, kids don't need to be exposed to that. I'm like, oh, I'm sure everything at your house is completely clean. There's no porn laying around. If you care that much, you're kind of a weird person. No! Happy Hot Topic! Speaking of everyone's favorite Selena ripoff. Jennifer Lopez has a lot to think about these days. Between acting projects, music, yeah. her just-launched documentary... We haven't thought about our music in about 12 years, though. Let's be real here. I was finding my way. Yeah. And her engagement to Ben Affleck. Well, that's a pretty big deal. I feel great. Thank you. But you're not welcome. DT's learned there's one thing she's not thinking about. Okay, you're the her worst. fiance Alex Rodriguez. If you're saying you're not thinking about him, you're thinking about him all day long. Who seemingly was probably the only reason you went back to Ben was to spite him not thinking about her ex-fiance Alex Rodriguez yeah. who seemingly moved on too like really moved on yeah I'm gonna make out with chicks in front of her buddy Ugh, he's the worst he must be the worst lover ever yeah that's A-Rod sharing a kiss with model Catherine Paget in Italy oh, I'm sure she's got a riveting personality <laughs> Later that night, the two hit the dance floor. Yeah, I'm going to dance. I don't know how to dance because my body's full of steroids. I cheat in every fashion. And there's more from this couple's retreat on Instagram. Catherine posting pics from their weekend away. The two cuddle up and hang out with friends on a boat. Mm. I'm at a point in my life that I'm actually doing all the things that I love to do. Oh, that's good. We're proud of you. But a source tells E.T. J.Lo isn't paying any mind to her ex over a year after their split. Got it. And doesn't even think twice about his love life. Our source. If they didn't even think twice about it, they wouldn't even have a video that says that they don't think twice about it. That means they think twice about it. Sads that A-Rod's dating life doesn't phase her, and J-Lo wants everyone to be happy. Uh, then why did she have to hurt Shakira's feelings by saying that Shakira did her better job than her at the halftime show? Oh, because she is a sociopath. She is a Selena ripoff. She wishes him the best, but it's not something that bothers her or takes up space in her mind whatsoever. Which I might actually believe that. I think all J-Lo thinks about is Jennifer Lopez. Understandable, J-Lo. The triple threat is busier than ever. Mm. I want something real. J-Lo just... I do too. Problem is, there's nothing genuine about you, so you're never going to be able to manifest anything truly real. Celebrated the debut of her documentary, Halftime. Yeah. It's halftime. I mean, halftime is halftime. I keep saying, like, it's so funny. We're talking about this today. Like, everybody else sucks, but I'm the best. <laughs> Champions are made in the in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah. That's when you win. So I feel like there's a uh, nice little sports analogy there. Really fitting in with everybody. A lot of life ahead of me. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. I uh, that's good. We just won't be listening. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy Hour will be right back. This following segment was brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. Monday through Friday, he has different classes. When I tell you that he is the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. Amiracademy.com. And I'm there Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Working out all uncoordinated and getting jacked. Happy Hour. Happy hour. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. 
whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. At Ryan Happy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. Add me on all social media, Ryan Happy Radio, Snapchat, Ryan Happy Radio. Also on Instagram, Happy Hour Radio, and Happy in the Morning. Get it? Got it? Good. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. And you can listen on Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, MixCloud, Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Amazon Music. Search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio. Like I always say, I record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Now, I am in a fake <laughs> fight with Snooki. That know. is not a real fight. Andy Cohen is shutting down rumors. He's in a feud with Jersey Shore star Snooki. Snooki's too busy being a mom. She's a little classier now than Andy Cohen. Who would have thought that'd be possible? After New Year's, anything's classier than that douche. What is Jesus? Snooki, okay? <laughs> so it has been, I feel like people keep trying to poke her and prod her. Yes. Yeah, they are, because you're a troll. That's what you manifest. Into something, and then it gets in the thing that she and I are in some fight. Oh, yeah. He addresses it all during a recent episode of Watch What Happens Live's After Party mm. with guests Bone Yang and Matt Rogers. Ah, uh, it sounds like a douchebag time. They're people I want to hang out with. I'm sure they would say the same. But here's the moment when Andy asks the show's bartender, Joey Camasta, who happens to be Snooki's BFF, to pass along a message. Uh, you are besties with Snooki, is yes, that right? Correct. Will you please tell her? Yes. That I love Snooki. Yeah, it's all. Do you? I'm sure he's like those like people that use the word love but don't really mean it. Like when you say the word love and then you go, I love you, but I'm going to insult you. Shut up. No love for Andy. Not genuine. So, how did this fake feud start? Mm. Well, over the years, fans have wondered and hoped Snooki would join the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Nah, she's part of the best show out of Jersey ever. Even better than Sopranos. I'm kidding. Relax. Given that she's from the Garden State and knows uh, a few of the housewives. But Andy, the executive producer of the reality show, has shot down the idea many times. Now, recent headlines are claiming there's tension between the two celebs. Oh, I'm sure there is. He's a douche and she's a douche. But Andy's clearing it all up while also explaining why he doesn't think she's a good fit. The issue is that I've been... Is that she's actually talented and a part of a better brand? Ask. A more memorable brand? No one knows about your Real Housewives in New Jersey brand. But everyone knows Jersey Shore. It's more memorable. I'm not saying it's a perfect show, but it's a better brand. Why he doesn't think she's a good fit. The issue is that I've been asked, is she, you know, would we ever put Snooki on the Real Housewives right. of New Jersey? She doesn't want it. My only thing is that she is so identifiable with right. Jersey Shore mm. and MTV. She she built MTV yes. reality shows. That's for Snooki. So in my mind, I just thought it's like putting. Um, uh, a Kardashian on like another show that has nothing to do with it. I it's agree. like two different worlds. I he just doesn't like her. He's jealous that that show is more memorable. Speaking of douchebags, what's going on with Thompson, Tristan Thompson? Tristan Thompson is getting some heat for appearing in Drake's newest music video. I feel like he's always just making heat. The 35-year-old rapper dropped the video for his single Falling Back from his seventh studio album, Honestly Nevermind, on Friday. Honestly, I'm going to listen to it. I got to check it out. It's getting all these bad reviews. I'd probably like it because I'm into that EDM. <laughs> Ryan Hoppy having sound effects from EDM songs. Him being an EDM fan. Who would have saw that coming? Damn, son. Where'd you find this? Or this thing? 
Yeah, this is from EDM Music. This, this, this. What up? Be played at high volume. Why? Preferably in a residential area. Oh, yeah, let the beat drop. That is so irritating. In the clip, Drake marries 23 women and Tristan serves as his best man, giving him... Yeah, it's kind of funny. ...advice before the nuptials. Mm. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Doesn't feel right? We scrap it? We go home? It's done. No, no, no. I'm good, bro. It's, uh, it's a good time for me, you know? I'm ready to, to settle down. I'm in love, so... Hi for you. Keep him away from Millie Bobby Brown. You don't do this, gotta get you right. Yeah, yeah, please get me right. Yeah, yeah. Only get married once. Mm -hmm. You're good and mm -hmm. full. You only get married once. <laughs> but a lifetime of being a deadbeat father. The video comes at an interesting time. On Wednesday, fans got to see the fallout of the. Oh, so you're mad that Thompson cheated on her, but was acting in a music video? Guess what? They're acting on their show. And these people act too, but now they're actually in real trouble. Savannah Chrisley is standing by her family. The of course they would. Of course you would. They're the reason you're famous. They give you money. Reality star broke her silence about her parents, Todd and Julie Chrisley, yeah. who were recently convicted of fraud and tax evasion. Ah, that sounds like a good time. The 24-year-old penned a lengthy post on Instagram on Thursday. That 24-year-old trust baby goes, oh no, I gotta get a real job. Asking her followers to be kind and saying that she will always have her mom and dad's backs. Oh, uh, that's good. They're the um, cash grab. Also, be nice. Oh, I'm sure they've always been nice to everyone they've worked with. They look like such delightful people, those Chrisleys. <laughs> Just saying. Before you continue reading, I would like to ask one thing of you. Please, uh, please keep watching our show and don't make us irrelevant because we'll need to pay back all these bills. Be kind. This life is so cruel, and we're all doing the best we can. Oh, yeah. I will continue to stand by my family and fight for justice. It's so cruel the way we can't get away with tax evasion because we're rich and elite, and we think we're above you. Justice for ourselves Burn and for out. others that the system has failed. There is only so much I can comment on legally at this moment. The post reads yeah. in part. You don't say. The reality star continued saying that despite feeling, quote, let down by God, she is leaning into her faith during the tumultuous time for her family. Uh, that's all you can do. He ain't real. The universe is so big, they're not going, oh no, can we take care of a spoiled, talentless trust fund, baby? Pete Davidson is poking a little fun at his girlfriend, Kim Kardashian. Uh -huh. In new photos and videos posted Friday from the couple's recent trip to Tahiti, uh -huh. the former SNL star helped his lady capture some content for her social media. Uh, she could ask me all day to post social media. I'd be like, I'm down. But not without a little playful banter. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, they're in the water. No, do it, do it. I was kidding. Do it. The Skims founder captioned the video, I can't tell if he's making fun of me, and went on to share more moments from their picturesque vacation. Our I, like, I feel like they're always on vacation. Two attempts at trying to get content, she wrote on a video, followed by a series of pics of her modeling on a paddleboard on the water. Pete's now- Ah, oh, whatever. So they're out vacationing. Selena Gomez is sharing new details from Britney Spears' recent wedding. Oh, cool. The only murders in the building star joined her co-star Martin Short on Jimmy Kimmel Live on Thursday. And All right. I don't even care. I despise Jimmy Kimmel. Ah, uh, so the Warriors won the NBA championship. Good for you. Last person I'm going to end the show with that I despise. Kelly Ripa. It's her last hurrah before she's off the family nipple, so to speak. Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos' daughter, Lola, is living it up in Europe. On Thursday, Kelly revealed on Live with Kelly and Ryan that her daughter is celebrating her 21st birthday in Europe, joking that it's her last hurrah before she is off the family dime. Now, so what's the celebration for Lola? What are you guys going to do? Well, we are waiting for her to get back. She's in Europe right now. Oh, yes. Um, so, yes. Poor Lola. Let's see. <laughs> Poor Lola. She's actually um, finding an apartment for her study abroad. And I was Great. like, that's funny. Normally, people find apartments by going online and finding an apartment online and then just showing up and being disappointed when no, they No, she get needs there. to go and test drive it, no, all, right? No, but she actually, she had a trip planned, and it's sort of like her, it's, you know, her big, it's her last hurrah before she's off the family nipple, so to speak. Oh, man, what a delightful person you are. Good riddance. Oh, you're kicking her out of the house? You're telling your daughter that you don't have to live with Kelly Ripa? What a punishment! Happy hour. 
happy hour. Money. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.